Uh, so I am thrilled to be back here with Turning Green. I've, I've gotten to speak uh, a couple times and every year I wonder, do I have something new to say? Because uh, I've given a, a few talks through the years and um, I don't want to bore those of you who have been here every time, uh, you know, Judy and Sue and Aaron and, and all of you other speakers that I often uh, get to partner with. Uh, and so but every year there is something new to say. There is something new to say, a new message, a new, a new uh, th something that has come to the fore. Now, as you know, Judy did um, share with us this idea of resilience and it's really an unavoidable thing right now. Um, I, I have to say that both personally and professionally resilience is a main theme for me. And um, although nobody ever wishes for hardship, um, there is a benefit that comes from it that is not possible during times of comfort. And that is the building of resilience, the building of the ability to continue when times are tough. You can't practice that without the tough times. Uh, and so I thought I would share with you a time that Dr. Bronner's went through resilience uh, or had the opportunity to learn resilience um, through some tough times and, and what, how that's applicable now or to any other time of, of challenge or change. And so as uh, Sophie shared, my grandfather was Dr. Bronner and started uh, the company in 1948. And his grandfather had started making soap in Germany in 1858. So a lot of soap history there. And when my grandfather started making soap, that wasn't his primary objective. His primary objective was to share the label. The soap was merely a messenger. Um, and if you've seen the label, you'll know it's got a lot of, of thoughts on it. And so my grandfather, through sheer passion and charisma and hard work, built Dr. Bronner's uh, uh, over 50 years um, into a, a, you know the, the legacy that it is today. It predated the organic industry. It predated uh, the natural movement by, by decades. And so what um, the challenge was for us, if you can uh, cast your mind back or imagine if you weren't there yourself, the 1990s, my grandfather was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Now, he'd always had a tough physical life because he was also blind. And um, that had not slowed him down. Well, although sometimes I wonder what he would have done if he weren't blind, but it didn't seem to slow him down. Um, and so in the 90s, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's and that really did start to slow him down. And through the, uh, the early to mid 90s, um, more and more he had to uh, rely on others to help with the daily running of, of the company. Um, and that fell very much on my dad's shoulders. Um, my dad was Jim Bronner. And um, that seemed to be a, a, good, a good transition. My dad was a chemist. He might not have had the passion for the label quite as much, but my uncle Ralph, my dad's brother, he very much did and figured we could carry the legacy on that way. Um, and so we, there was a plan there. So my grandfather passed away on March 7th of 1997 um, after a long decline with Parkinson's. Um, and unfortunately, two months later, my dad was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And so the plan that had been in place for the past seven years uh, of my dad taking over the company uh, was thrown into jeopardy. I was in college, my brothers, one was still in college, one was just out, and none of us um, had the, on our radar to, uh, to come to Dr. Bronner's um, in the short term. Um, but my oldest brother, David, he decided it was worth continuing. And so, and so he moved back to California. He'd been a social worker in Boston. He moved back to California with his young family and took over a company uh, with the help of my mom. Um, and this is where the trouble hit. Um, one of the, my grandfather was excellent at many things, but he did not like to fit into other people's structures. And unfortunately, that included um, the structure in the United States of taxes and uh, inheritance. And so he made absolutely no provision for the company to pass from one generation to the other. And if you've been through this sort of situation uh, in your family, um, estate taxes in the United States are 50%. That is mind boggling and uh, another issue entirely. So if you make no provision uh, to pass your uh, 
your legacy in another way, 50% of it goes to the government. That's what we were faced with. And it was like, boom, boom. It was my grandfather, my dad. And all of a sudden, here's my brother, David, at 24. Um, not only with this amazing legacy from our family, but then this massive, um, this massive tax burden. And this is where Dr. Braun has really faced an existential threat. Um, for one thing, we're questioning the identity. And I say we, because in retrospect, I feel part of it, even though at the time I was not. Um, but we're facing an identity crisis. Is Dr. Bronner's the company more than Dr. Bronner's the man? Uh, you know, the company was very much founded, as I said, on my grandfather's philosophy. And so can the company continue as a business without the man himself? Uh, and then the second thing was a very practical thing. Can we financially survive where we are right now? And so, um, so through this time, it was a lot of, of hard work and a lot of thinking uh, and came to the decision that yes, Dr. Bronner's the company is worth continuing even without Dr. Bronner himself because of what he put in place. He put in place the, um, the concept as the business concept that he termed, well, he borrowed the term, but, but that he acted on called constructive capitalism, which is that any company that produces something needs to share the profits of what they produce with everybody who's involved from the, the very first farmer that plants a seed to the final shipper that gets it out the door. Um, and that the Dr. Bronner's, the company wasn't just the man at this point, it was the people. Now we're not talking a lot of people, um, under 10 at this point, 1998, under 10 people. Um, but that was enough. That was enough to keep going. And then uh, the, the resilience as far as the, um, the practical aspect, that is what took just some digging in. How on earth are we going to survive this financially? And it involves stripping things down, stripping down um, the, the pay of the executive, stripping down superfluous, um, uh, uh, really looking at our, 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 our business practices, what's necessary, what's not, um, and, and also negotiating with the, the government about how to get through that time. Um, it involved not getting up, giving up, not getting angry, um, not being snarky, uh, and also, as Anna said, finding people who are a whole lot smarter than us to come alongside us and give us advice. Um, a lot of humility of, you know, we could be proud of my grandfather's legacy, and we certainly were, but we needed help because uh, we weren't going to make it through that time. And so bringing, bringing people into our, into our sphere of influence that could um, direct us through this really tough time. So coming out of that, which obviously we did, uh, coming out of that though, the lessons that were learned um, had to do with uh, focusing on what is the most important thing to us. Um, who are we as Dr. Bronner's the company if we don't have Dr. Bronner himself? And, and the core was the people. Uh, and so after, after we got through the, that existential threat and we knew the company was gonna continue, now what? And so um, during that time, and I'm going to share, uh, share my screen here um, because I want to share with you what we call, are, are you seeing my screen? I hope so. I can't hear you. There we go. Yes, you can. Great. Thank you, Sophie. Um, it, is this statement here, and this we call this, we call this our prayer. And this is what came out of that time period. Um, of what are we all about as a company? If we had to sum it up, are we a soap company? Are we a trendy environmental hippie company? Uh, well, yes, but um, that's not the core of what we are. And so it was this statement, in all we do, let us be generous, fair, and loving to Spaceship Earth and all its inhabitants. For we're all one or none, all one. And if you look at this, the core of this is relationships, is people. Generosity, fairness, and love have to do with relationships. All three of those have to do with relationships. And also to see this earth not as a, as a rock, but as a, as a vehicle, as a vessel, and that all of us on it are passengers. And so um, this is where our focus became. All right, so what does that have to do with you know, making soap? 
Um, well, we were, uh, as I said, my grandfather had some really great uh, business practices that took care of everybody in the company, a uh, 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 very fair pay. Um, I, I don't remember the numbers from back then, but right now, like our, our starting wage is around $20. We have an hour. Um, we have a, a salary cap at five times that for the highest paid company, you know, 100% healthcare coverage, no, no deductible um, bonuses, profit sharing, all sorts of great stuff for the people who actually work for Dr. Bronner's. But that's not all Dr. Bronner's influences because we buy things. We buy huge amounts of ingredients from all over the world. And those come from other people. So right around 2000, we'd, uh, David had already taken the company organic and that was good, but organic is a pretty environmental standard. It doesn't have much to do with people. Um, and so the next question was, who's on the other side of our supply chain? And what do those people look like and how are their lives? And so that took us into a time of looking at, our, at who's on the other side of our supply chain. And this is what we found. We found, so here are the, uh, this is from our mint uh, supplier in India, our olive oil supplier in Palestine, our coconut oil supplier in Sri Lanka, and our palm oil supplier in Ghana. These are people, and they may be supplying us with these ingredients, but they also are people with families, with lives, with communities, with issues outside of what they do for us. And this is where our fair trade journey began, which has transitioned into our regenerative organic journey now. Uh, at taking a close look at who are these people whose lives we impact because we buy from them and we need them. Um, and so fair trade uh, helped us uh, with the premium that goes into fair trade purchasing, a 10% premium, helped us to um, impact positively their communities, building things like uh, maternity wards, clean water supplies, um, uh, improved facilities uh, for, for schools, and even grants for employees to improve their personal uh, spheres. And so if I have to take it down to what is Dr. Bronner's, uh, what is it, what is they learn, what have we learned from our tough times is that it all comes down to the people um, more than anything else. And you have to think about who is on the other side of what you're doing. We can't necessarily see these people, although let me tell you the personal relationships we've built around the world are key, um, but we have to think about them. And so every time, uh, you know, we write or we act or we decide something, we have to think who's on the other side of this decision. And so if I wanna back that out to something you can take away, um, you're gonna be working in all sorts of different realms, spheres, et cetera, but I can guarantee you, you're gonna be working with people. Uh, and I want you to think about those people. I want you to think about them when you type something, when you write online, when you, when you write on social media, when you write a letter, when you put your words out there, remember they're gonna be heard by people. When you have to convince somebody or persuade them, someone who doesn't agree with you, remember that they're not just existing in your two-dimensional relationship with them, but they are a person in their own three-dimensional life um, to speak to them. Um, and that's what, it, that's what it comes down to. It's what I've learned or had verified for me personally through this, um, through this time with my kids. Um, it's, about, it's about our relationships. And so uh, if you are want to hear more about what, where this journey of connecting with the people on the other side of our supply chain has taken us, um, uh, and this is the extent of our supply chain around the world, uh, the fair trade partners that we have um, around the world, very extensive. Um, our vice president of special ops, his name is Gara Lezon, he has written a book that's being released in March called Honor Thy Label. And it connects what we do with our fair trade supply chain with the original ideas my grandfather set forth in the label. Um, and it just all comes down to the people and uh, to realizing that um, every decision you make impacts people uh, somewhere, even if you can't see them, even if you'll never meet them. So that's the message I have for this year. And um, I very much appreciate your including me again. <laughs>